It's officially tax season. In fact, yesterday was the first day to file. And for many, the question is, should I do it now? Should I wait? Joining me now to help answer some of those tax questions is CPA Bill Shelton. Hey, good to have you here. Good morning. Second year of the Trump tax law, and the uh, standard deduction was essentially doubled. And a lot of people say, you know, sh should I go ahead and itemize? Should I just take the standard deduction? Should you basically do some math and see if you qualify for those itemized deductions? You should. Um, the standard deduction is up to 24 thousand two hundred so if you're if, married if you're married so yeah if you're um, interested at mortgage interest charitable donations there's a few others um, medical expenses if they're over seven and a half percent tally all those up and what if they're over that standard deduction then you would itemize now last year uh, you had to pay a penalty if you didn't have health insurance that's changed no longer a penalty for no that. longer a penalty all right now um, uh, uh, there are some people who wonder you know is it best to go ahead and file early you know, I'm getting money back. But, you know, I, I was watching the, the interview you did with Zach, and basically you, you said, you know what, maybe it's best to wait till like mid-March. Make sure you've got all the paperwork in so that you don't have a problem and, you know, you don't have to worry about refiling with the IRS. Correct, yeah. So a lot of, a lot of the statements will be, if they need to be corrected or amended with broker houses and stuff like that, won't come out until February or March. So I, I would advise if you have those, waiting until March to file. I mean, if you have super simple, just a W-2 or so, go ahead and get it filed right. but if as you soon have, as you can. If you have 1099 or freelance income, they don't have that same end of January deadline that, you know, the regular employers do. So that paperwork may come in a may little bit later. May come in a little later. Right. Correct. And, and we, were, we were chatting right uh, there during the commercial break, and you said for small business owners, there's some things that they need to know about this year that are different. Yeah, there's a qualified business income deduction, which is a 20% deduction available for uh, if you had K-1 income or certain self-employment, and it's a 20% deduction. Pretty complicated as far as the, the computing that deduction, but it's well worth taking a look at. Also for uh, small businesses setting up retirement plans, you have up until the date you file your return to do SEP, which is up to 25% of your income. Don't overlook the IRAs. Mm -hmm. uh, alimony, no longer deductible? No longer deductible, but no longer taxable if you're receiving it. Right. And, and it's also time to sit back after you go ahead and you, you, know, you do your taxes. If you owe, uh, you know, sit back and, and you know, look at how much you contribute to your 401k and, and things like that, because that can reduce your tax load for the next year. Correct. Looking into 2020, and that's up to 19500 And then actually, if you're 50 or older, it's up to $6,500, what they call the catch-up. So you want to make sure that you're, you're maximizing those to take advantage of it in 2020. And, you know, when you talk about the biggest mistakes that people make on their tax returns, it's usually the simple things like forgetting to put the Social Security number on or even forgetting to, to, to sign it. To sign it, yep. And the IRS will kick those back, won't process them. And they've also simplified the uh, system for filing electronically. So it should be easier to navigate this year. It should be, yep. Yeah, and it's better to do that because you don't have as much opportunity for identity theft and things like that. Exactly. Yeah. Always, you know, recommend doing electronically. Yeah. There's not a paper trail. Somebody can't get hold of your return, your paper return, get your social security number or what have you, and steal your cash. And it's going to be processed by the computer you know, automated. There you go. So if you missed any of this information or want to send it to someone who is starting their taxes this week, post this interview on our website, newsforjax.com, a little later this morning. And even though this is a leap year, you've got one extra day to get your taxes done. The deadline is still April 15th.